And that means we are now live here on our YouTube channel. It's our halftime report, the show from Tackle Trading, where we go through the markets a step at a time, looking at the charts, the news, the economic data, earnings reports, anything grabbing our attention that we think is important. Uh, break it down, analyze it, give you guys some insights so you can better run your daily routine. Uh, welcome back to our show. It's been a big week for the markets, guys. Uh, you know, across the board, stocks are up. I think the small cap index, Russell 2000, is up almost 7 8% this week alone. The NASDAQ's ripped like 4 or 5% S&P as well. S&P pushing to all-time highs. We're going to analyze it all. We've got a good panel of coaches here to do it. Uh, we've got Matt, Frank, and Mark, and myself, Tim Justice. Start with you, Matty. How are you doing today, sir? You know, Tim, doing absolutely excellent. Excited to be here with uh, the team to break down the market activity after a very, very, very healthy week in the marketplace. And as a bull, that's what you want to see. That's about all you're ever going to see if you're if that's uh, what you're looking for as a bull. So great week as uh, as a bull, and we're, we'll see what transpires next week. But you got to be happy where we're at to finish the week. Could be a little profit taking today. It does feel that way. Uh, very quick. Also, T, before you bring in uh, Coach Frank and Mark, uh, we got to enable chat. We have to enable chat. Let me work on that on gotta, the back gotta, on gotta, my gotta let on my side. Got to let him. Well, got to let him come in. All right. Let me let me troubleshoot. You know, whenever we we lose our producer, Young Tan, uh, we we're always at a loss without him. So I'll get that worked <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, you got, you got me and Tim figuring out how to go live on YouTube. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying, everybody, it's understandable why we're having some chat functionality problems. <laughs> That's right. I'll get Cody on the horn. Frankie, blame me for it. <laughs> Frankie, run with it. I'm gonna call. Cody. You got it. You got it. Uh, welcome out, everybody, and great to be here. Great to be back with the team. Technical issues are uh, behind me now, uh, which, uh, man, a bummer last week. But uh, what a week in the market, right? Like Tim said, I mean, a, a strong, strong bounce, and you know, we're even fighting pretty hard today right so we were talking a little in the pre-production uh, matt and i that you know it feels like maybe a profit taking day uh you know we've had all week to, to buy into things but you know here we are and the s p we're pushing close to the the daily high so an interesting uh real interesting week you know, it, it, it really has been a fascinating week. And again, coming out of the, the week prior, I mean, context does matter here. I mean, yes, we only had, you know, two down days, but those two down days with the context surrounding what those down days were, I mean, it, it, there was a little bit of fear building here. And then the market just wiped out all of that fear out this week. Just a very good, robust response. And, you know, you are seeing the market slow down on the back half of this week, which is understandable after uh -huh. the first two days of price appreciation. And as you start to fight through that resistance level, which also represents that all time high. And you could certainly see after, a, you know, after a week, and I want to get you and Mark's take on this, because after a week in, in like, yeah, I mean, communication services, you know, up yeah. 8%. <laughs> I mean, they had some some great earnings out there, you know, and we'll get into some of those earnings here today. But, you know, just an absolutely fan, fantastic week out of uh, communication services, financial, consumer, cyclical, energy, you know, all in that 6% range. And, and, you know, the when the worst performing sector is up 2%, that's a good damn week. good week in the, in, in the, in, in the marketplace. But after a week like this, where you've had such a robust response off of support and you are a little bit overextended, and then you couple of that with as the week did transpire, look at that decreasing participation. You have a little bit of de decreasing partic participation. We could see a little bit concerned. How do you guys go about approaching next week with, with on the backs of a week like this week? Because, for example... I feel like we have a little bit of chop ahead of us next week. And, and the broad market, you might just be looking at a breakout here. But when you go top down approach and you're looking at the broad market, you're analyzing the sectors and then you go into the industries and you go into the individual components. I'm, I, don't get me wrong. I'm not seeing a lot of bear out there, but I'm seeing a lot of patterns that are in the middle of setting up or, you mm -hmm. know, we're in bullish retracements, you know, de uh, like deeper bullish retracements, take Goldman Sachs, for, exa uh, for example, you know, deeper retracements that are now in the middle of the recovery, right? Where there's no clear, I don't even want to say clear trigger. There's no trigger here. I mean, you're literally right. You're halfway, right, you're halfway between the pivot points, right? Right. So, so you could see a little bit of chop here, a little bit of sideways behavior there. Taking a look at finance, you're going to see the exact same thing. So you, you have a marketplace that, 
again, you got everything you wanted this week in the market, but at the same time, you're looking at this next week forward projecting saying, oh, I'm certainly can't expect next week to be like this week, given the, the strength of the patterns are a little weaker this week. The strength of the trends are a little weaker this week. And the triggers just are nowhere near as, as, as just exciting. I mean, guys, I remember sitting in that scanner report meeting last week and just being overtly excited just with all the coaches about the type of triggers and potentially had the, uh, last mm-hmm. week. This week's a little bit different. So how do you approach it for next week? Yeah, I think, you know, I always call this an all or nothing market, you know, being a little dramatic where, you know, kind of everything participated. Right. And I know that not literally everything did. But broadly speaking, uh, as we move into next week, I'm much like you, Matt, I expect, you know, the overall you know drift to continue to the upside. But I wouldn't be surprised for a second to see a little bit of chop. And that just I think is going to make it a little bit more of a stock pickers type of a market because there's yeah. always something out there. Right. Uh, and so whereas this week, you know, perfectly reasonable if the way you played this retracement was to play the the spy or to play yeah. you know a particular etf or two i think as we go into next week you know this i wouldn't be looking at the index really as the vehicle to try to trade personally i'll no. be kind of branching into individual uh you know individual companies well and and honestly frankie i started doing my scanning earlier today and you know there it, I said this last week, I'll say it again this week. It's a general bullish uptrend. In a, it's a stock picker's market in a general bullish uptrend. And, uh-huh. and, 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 and I am seeing that play out again as I'm scanning here today. There's just not as many candidates this week as, say, they were last week. I mean, when yeah. we were looking in the scan report meeting just between you and I, I mean, we're rocking there around 150 different potential trades, right? That we were looking at and kind of categorized, Mark. Yeah, no. And and when you go back the last couple of years after fear-based events, uh, the Mm -hmm. worries about the election, right? You know, as soon as the election trade war, whatever it is, right? Huge trade war. And when that subsided, huge weeks. So so you have these huge weeks after these fear-based jittery events, election worries or the GameStop. What does this mean? Our hedge funds collapsing, blah, blah, what all of that volatility last week. And when that subsides, you have massive weeks following that. And then you oftentimes have some form of normal trend. I mean, if you look after the election and the Pfizer, markets basically traded sideways for a couple of weeks after the initial euphoria, right? Mm-hmm. So they traded sideways for a couple of weeks and then they started a slow grindy trend. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that. Form. Yeah, I, I, and I agree. And just a little, and a lot of times when you see this type of market response, the market gives a little bit of a reprieve where it just says, I'm going to go for a walk for a, for a couple of days. I'm, I'm going to take a couple of days off to reassess the situation and, and, and realize that we just went up 5% this week. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, but <laughs> in, in, in those environments, I mean, it's, it's, those are usually A plus cash flow environments and they're great yeah. stock picker directional mm-hmm. environments. Oh, so, yeah. The market grinding. I mean, this has been a great week. It's it's been one of the best weeks I've ever had. I actually went directional for a minute, which you know, look at you for, nice. for a minute, you. you know. But I'll go Mark, back to my Mark, cash flow ways. Mark, <laughs> we got to a, a day trade, and now he's like, <laughs> I got, I got, I got to sell something. <laughs> you know, so. I got to sell an option right now just to feel better about myself. <laughs> like, and, and you know, but then you know, like, listen, there, once again, there's no bearish theme right now. But the euphoria, great week, respond, um, and then just you know, it's going to be a good market unless something negative pops up, but the rate of return that you had this week, you know, probably going to slow down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I I would honestly put it like this. You have, you have, you have a higher probability situation this week than you did last week because just of what we were coming through with the whole meme, you know, fiasco that was happening and we're kind of getting to a little bit of the back end of that storyline uh, plan at just the initial one we're starting the the next phase of that right the the janet yalen re- re- regulatory measure type phase but you know when you get on the, when you come into last week and you're saying okay we're coming through this situation we're fighting for support you know we, we and we analyzed all the different sectors out there last week like we were analyzing 
basic materials. And we said, okay, we're fighting for support here at 70. And we're talking about communications, you know, kissing off that bullish retracement off the 50 day moving average. And we're talking about energy, you know, testing underneath the 50 and fighting for that 40 handle. And we were talking about finance fighting for the 29 handle. And I went through that multiple different times late last week. And I was saying, okay, yeah, you got a battle going on, which doesn't mean, which, which means it's, it's not as high of a probability of price appreciation, but if you get it, that's where you have the big return. This week, I think you got a little bit of an opposite scenario because of the price appreciation and the, and the, and I think you do have to call last week's perform or this week's performance in the market a, a home run by the market standards. I mean, I, I certainly would say that with the type of performance we saw in the broad market. Um, but but this week you're looking at a scenario in the broad markets, and I'll come back to the S and P where you most likely have a higher probability scenario of price appreciation, but you certainly don't have the type of return uh, versus risk ratio that you had from uh, last week. So it's just a little bit of a difference between a retracement and a breakout, quite frankly. Um, so I do think you can expect price appreciation. I do believe it's gonna be, continue to be a stock picker's market out there. Um, and we'll have these micro storylines play out next week, the same way we did this week and the week before. But for the most part, again, I'll just say this general bullish uptrend stock pickers market and, you know, the bulls after this week, they're going to be in a little bit of celebratory mood. Not a lot of fear out there. We'll see how the market performs coming into the uh, futures market on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I think if you're in a position where you're close to a T2 or something like that, you can scale off naturally. You can take a few of your shorter term trades off. It doesn't necessarily mean, I don't know, there might be somebody out there needs to hear this. It doesn't mean necessarily mean you go 100% to cash though oh, uh, here. No. Nobody's saying that. Uh, we're just saying wait, wait. bull market. We're in a good okay. position. We're moving Hold in the right on. direction. Does that, does that disclaimer really need to be said when all we're talking about is not expecting the market to have the same type of 5% momentum <laughs> next week? <laughs> I don't know. My portfolio didn't go up 8%. I better, I, you know. I know. get it. I get it. We're all, we're all greedy little traders. I get it. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Matt, uh, we did get a monthly jobs report uh, this morning yeah. that uh, obviously was going to capture the attention of the marketplace. Uh, what, what did we learn? Well, we learned that numbers and detail can oftentimes be a little bit different. Um, and sometimes when you see these headline numbers uh, from an economic perspective, you know, and I've said, I, I've said this in the past, I've said it for 15 years now straight, politicians use the headline numbers, the investors look at the detail of what created those headline numbers. And so when you see an unemployment report here today, come in at 6.3%, which is a 0.4% increase from last month, you would look at that number and you'd say, oh my goodness, this is a really good number. And oh my goodness, the labor market is getting, you know, uh, is getting some love and the economy is opening up and things are going good and everything, everything is, you know, gravy train analysis out there. But the, 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 the devil's in the details to a, uh, to a certain extent when it comes to economic reports, and certainly when it comes to reports such as CPI numbers, such as labor market numbers, because, again, it's, it's what's in that detail and the context that led to that number that is important to the market. The headline number, 6.3%, is only going to be important to politicians and people that are not market participants. When it comes to market participants, that detail is very important. And when you're looking at the labor market numbers here today, I, I, I just feel this is, this is a pretty, pretty damning labor market number, to be perfectly honest with you today. Um, you're talking about a labor market that basically added 49,000 jobs to the market, and that is much better than the negative 200 and, you know, 27,000 jobs we had in December. So we certainly improved in that capacity. But look at what kind of happened. You had in, in, in this month of January, in leisure and hospitality, you basically shed 61,000 jobs. Leisure and hospitality has been just a terrible area for the labor market in the past year, and it continues to be a terrible labor uh, area. And that, and, and that was one of the negatives, but you also had the retail side lost 38,000 jobs, healthcare lost 30,000 jobs, transportation and manufacturing, uh, manufacturing lost 38,000 jobs. Um, but when you look at even some of the, the, the good parts of the report, 
you're talking about education. We added about 119,000 jobs from an educational perspective. These were not jobs that were lost. These were jobs that were furloughed that now are coming back as we're reopening our schools. But one of the things that we also added in terms of professional and business services, we added 97,000 new jobs last, uh, last month. 97,000 and you'd be like, man, that is a big number for uh, for business services there. You're absolutely right. 97,000 was represented the bulk, if not the, 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 the massive majority of the job growth we saw last month outside of education with the teachers coming back to a certain extent. But of that 97,000 guys, of the 97,000 new jobs, 81,000 were temporary seasonal financial accounting jobs which happen every January and go away. So even some of the better parts of the report that that helped get to that 6.3% number, those jobs aren't good paying, uh, you know, you know, middle class jobs, industrial manufacturing jobs, those are temporary workers that are going to be laid off. And one thing that you have to understand with how the unemployment rate works is it only reflects people that are actively seeking employment and receiving unemployment benefits. It doesn't represent the actual truth of the labor market itself. And when you see a number go from 6.7 to 6.3, again, you would think that is a positive number, but what represents the contraction in the unemployment report today is not positive job growth, but simply put, people giving up on the labor on the labor uh, marketplace and stopping the, the 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 seeking of a job to even begin with and so you have a decline in the participation rate fairly aggressively that rivals honestly going back to the 1950s when women were getting into the labor market for the first time so it, it's honestly it's a fairly disastrous report in my opinion today Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, uh, we did not ever get that V-shaped recovery. I know Fed uh, Chair Evans well, uh, was talking about maybe 2023. We'll get back to these numbers, but the labor market's not strong here. I just that- hope people realize how how ridiculously it is to listen to politicians and people with agendas when it comes to economic projections at this point. They always speak their book and they never speak the actual truth in what is happening from an economic perspective. There was never going to be a V-shaped recovery. It was impossible to happen to anybody with a, with, with, with a micro fraction of understanding of how the economy actually works. And it's going to take a very, very, very long time for the labor market to get back to pre-pandemic levels. And no, I do not believe they're going to hit that target deadline by, uh, by 2022 for the labor market. In fact, I'm not even sold that the labor market will ever see 3.5% again from an unemployment rate perspective unless people just stop seeking jobs to begin with because you're going to have entire industries from a from a labor perspective remove themselves from physical labor so it's it's a it's listen biden's got a very tough challenge ahead of him from a labor perspective and it's going to be very very difficult to get to where he wants to go Mm -hmm. Uh, back on the charts for a minute if we can and uh, you know did you guys run through uh just the the thorough technical analysis yet by the way fuck the indexes Index, uh, yeah, we talked to indexes. Talked into index a little bit. I was uh, trying to get that chat up and running while you were doing that. So yeah, yeah, I, here, yeah. here's the thing. Here's the question I had for both of you guys. We're going to have our scattering report meeting later in the day, uh, and obviously we had a little bit of caution. Still bullish coming into the week. Uh, do you upgrade here on the breakup? You know, even though we are talking profit taking and all that kind of stuff, uh, when you've had a five percent week up, your range up now. Is that a maintained that or is that an upgrade? We're, we, we just broke out of an all-time high. It's a five-point upgrade for me. Now, we'll have that conversation in detail with all the coaches of tackle trading later on today. But, yeah, it, it's definitely going to be a five-point upgrade. It, and, and I'm sure there's going to be some thought to being a little bit more aggressive with the upgrade. Uh, we did downgrade 20 last week, and we're higher than we were last week. So I do understand that argument. But what's going to happen 
and I'm just going to give him a little primer is that argument is going to be laid out. And I'm going to say, yeah, but I don't believe we can expect to see the same type of performance. And I think we would be a little bit premature given the overextended nature coming into this breakout to upgrade too aggressively here. We expect the market to play a little defense next week. We expect it to test that breakout channel a couple times because of the overextended nature. So I do feel a five point upgrade is certainly warranted given the fact that the market responded bullish. We did break out of that all-time high but tackle trading rankings are always going to be conservative in nature and we're never going to chase the dragon of dreams and glory and we're going to make sure that we're always accurate from a technical perspective so given the fact that we're overextended given the fact that in the sectors and specifically the industries we're in the middle of some of those ranges we love the price movement but a, a, a five-point upgrade in the S&P is probably where we're going to be. Sectors are going to be a little bit different. Communications had an absolutely wonderful sector on the backs of some really good economic, uh, I mean, earnings reports this week. You know, finance coming off the lows very aggressively. We will see some separation in the sectors later on today. But from a broad market perspective, I would expect a five-point upgrade, but we'll see where the number comes in at. Mm-hmm. And I always enjoy those conversations on Friday afternoon uh, with the coaches at Tackle Trading. That's one of my favorite sure. parts of the week, quite frankly, uh, going through all the different commodities and everything, ranking everything. Uh, speaking of commodities, let's move on to crude oil, gold, the rest of them next. Uh, we're going to get into some stocks a little bit later in the show. Uh, we've got earnings roundup, and Coach Frank has his breakout charts as well as some retracement charts, I, w- I believe, as well. Frank, you yeah, some charts? Yeah, I got a few yeah. things. Yeah, I got a few things to look at. Yeah. Let's take a look at crude. Let's go on, on through the, the commodity markets. Let's bring Mark in here. Obviously, Mark, you run the commodity report at Tackle Trading. Crude has had a monster week as well. How do you approach this when it's range up? Uh, there's still some good uh, opportunities in individual energy stocks that haven't uh, – went up as high as oil. I mean, we've been talking for a while now about how the sewing circle and the different people and Goldman Sachs raising it. And you didn't see oil sell off in last week's risk off environment. There's been a lot of things pointing up to oil and oil's had a really good week. Now, do you chase the price of oil here? No, I mean that, you know, that as an, you know, futures oil trader, but even if oil comes down a little bit, as long as it holds that breakout level at around what, 54 54, 55 um you know but this is very constructive for the actual real life energy profits of individual companies Mm -hmm. you can go to a lot of different energy stocks and you can find some good setups i mean this is one of the things about a stock pick at market i'd be shocked if we don't have a good a few good energy setups on the scattering reports this weekend um you know i i'm pretty sure that people will bring a lot because there's some really good setups where price hasn't run um, and there's some good opportunities. So that's how I'm approaching it right now. Frankie, uh, anything to add to that chart? You know? Yeah, I mean, that was a legit breakout, right? We took a while, uh, 54 clean break. I think, like Mark said, it's, it's tough to, to chase oil, at least for me. Any sort of pullback, as long as it's above that resistance, uh, if, you know, any sort of consolidation, uh, very, very interested uh, for the first time in a while because, you know, it's, you know, to, to kind of piggyback off Mark, I've been, you know, away from crude itself and I've been working with energy, you know, stocks, but that break, I agree with Mark. I still think there's some, some room to run. I think we need a little bit of a, t- a technical setup, whether it's retracement or consolidation, but I do expect, uh, you know, as long as that 54 holds that we'll get an opportunity, unless it just wants to go crazy and keep running, which good for the people who bought it. I'm mm-hmm. all right with that. <laughs> so yeah. Maddie, anything you want to add there? No, I mean, the technical breakout on the weekly chart is very, very strong. You're, you're obviously overextended in the short term on the daily chart, and, and, and Frank's 100% correct. Look for a little bit of short-term consolidation as that 90 MA plays catch up. And then it, it's at this point with crude, I think it's pretty obvious. You're, you're momentum trading it, and you're waiting for the 90 MA to catch up and looking for a high base with the clean trigger. And if we get that, that's going to be a good trade. If we don't, lob a bull put spread and call good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's go through the metals markets next to start with gold. And I'm interested to get Frank's take on this gold chart. Obviously, Matt, you know, has been analyzing day by day by day, uh, every day in the halftime report. Uh, Frankie, with a little that, sell off. That's going to take me about two seconds today. Yeah, that's right. So it's, Frankie, what it, about you? Yeah, I mean, it's in that battle zone, right? You've got the, you know, that 50 weekly and that old pivot from back in November. Uh, nice bounce back here today. Uh, we go to the weekly, Maddie. Just want yeah, to see course. how we're doing. We're dancing right at that 50. I know we broke through it, but 
we, we it might it could go either way we may or may not close right uh not a great look certainly in my opinion nothing bullish to see here at this point in time this general area is the fight that i think is interesting um if that if we give out that pivot i would have le- technically some very legitimate uh concerns to the to the downside we're too close to it right now in my opinion to try to even make a too much of a bearish case as far as a trade goes, but there's a lot of bearish technical cases you could make beyond that, <laughs> I, that point, yeah, Frank, right? You, you know? Yeah. I, I, I ahead, think Mitty. it's fairly simple on gold. Um, every bull is, is begging for another bull to be the first one to buy because they don't want to fight this support battle. And so they're in hope yep. mode, right? Uh, because they, they don't want to fight because who wants to fight against this type of movement to the downside? They're just hoping the other bulls hold that, hold that pattern. Just hoping because, that, yeah. You know, I mean, it, 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 it got trounced and yeah, you got to like this slight recovery here today, but I I'm taking this as a, a overextended technical bounce coming into support levels and nothing more than that. So I, th- I think uh, gold's going to be in a nice little battle here and, for, for me, I, I, I mean, I just don't like to participate in those battles. I like to see those battles be won and then join the winning team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've, I've said, how many times have I said this, guys? There's only one person that's a bigger flip flopper in the world and uh, over politicians, and that's traders. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have to flip flop. You, you have to. You, absolutely. Like, yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, speaking of which, let's look at silver. You know, I, I know gold is down here sitting there trying to fight support. Silver's more in the stuck in the middle of the range. And it's had a, a little bit different uh, price action here this week, you know, gapping out on Monday, backfilling here. Uh, you could map out a potential trade here, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't, could. I mean, wh- wh- where's your I, head out on this market? You can on the silver stocks too. There's a couple of silver plays that are deeper pullbacks. <laughs> and the only question is, because I, I do think you got a technical scenario that is that is setting up that you can start mapping out a, a, a pretty decent trade here. And this is the first day that we have had technical confirmation that we've been talking about in the halftime report all week. You know, I remember two days ago on Wednesday, we were looking at this little slowing momentum spinner top uh, doji candle here. And we said, yeah, this is what you want to see. And we kind of like it, but you haven't seen any degree of confirmation. And we talked about, you know, once you get confirmation, then it's time to start mapping out the trade. And as of right now, I mean, we got to see what happens with the close here today, but uh, it does look like we're going to have some degree of confirmation on the silver chart uh, uh, later on today. But again, we're, you got to wait for that to close. You can't just test up, test up is not a close. You got to let, you got to let that uh, close. And if it does close, I do think we got uh, some potential out there in the silver market. But again, you're not just fighting technicals here. You're, you're, you're fighting some unknown things as well that are happening in the underbelly of the market and how, and, and, and we don't know to the, to the extent that that did impact silver here. I don't, I don't believe any, any of us believe that what happened on GameStop can remotely happen on silver, but you do have a little bit of that creeping mm-hmm. into this market. So there are, you are finding a few things, but again, if you've been, we said this on Goldman Sachs and I believe, uh, you know, we were looking at some retracement uh, yesterday with Tyler and Tyler said the same thing I said on Goldman Sachs. If you've been looking at silver, and this isn't, uh, oh my goodness, if you've never looked at silver, hey, let's go look at silver today. No, if you've been looking at silver, then what else are you looking for? You got to ask that question and you have to answer that question because if you can't answer that question, you probably shouldn't be trading silver. Frank, anything to add to the text? Yeah, no, I'm pretty much spot on. I mean, I can't imagine who would choose the gold chart over the silver chart. If you're looking to move into uh, one of the metals, uh, one you can easily map out uh, on, we're getting higher highs and higher lows, you know, whatever the reason was or how much weight we want to give, give it, it did happen, right? So I'm pretty decent from a technical perspective. Like mm-hmm. Matt said, there's, I think you have to assume there is that little bit of unknown stuff, right? Uh, that uh, there's a little tougher to map out, but that works both ways, right? That's not just risk. <laughs> That's a potential reward as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, let's keep moving through these markets. Uh, you know, let's go on to the dollar next, then Bitcoin if we can. Obviously, economic data here today uh, about the dollar uh, a little bit down, red candle, but Matt still kind of a reversal pattern still in play here. It's been developing for a while. What you read here technically? 
Uh, read technically here is it, honestly nothing. It's breaking out and it's trying to find its range and its pattern. Let's just see how it navigates 24 and a half. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take anything from that downward movement here today. You're a little bit overextended and now you're just fading. Now, if we do clip that 24 and a half level, honestly, I, I, I know everybody's like, oh, our dollar's dying, our dollar's dying. And I'm like, just get it over with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, going to take, like, I, uh, listen, it's gonna I, take I, a long time. I, I get it. I get it. But I am a rip the band aid off type of a guy. Sure. <laughs> like, like, and I, I don't think I'm saying anything crazy to anybody out there, but, you know, let's just get it over. And if the dollar does clip that guys I, had, I would actually say that's a bullish catalyst for most metals out there and i'd say that's a bullish catalyst for the stock market as well so uh dollar going down guys not is it isn't necessarily bad for the investor class is is my point it's always bad for the consumer class but that's not who tackle trading is so that's not who we're talking to um but uh, that's all i got to say on the dollar bitcoin here just again hesitation candle you've now had two hesitation candles after a very very impressive bounce off 29 30,000 uh earlier uh late last week in the continuation this week this is elon day this is what elon does guys we love him we support it but it, it's it it doesn't add to the conversation quite frankly mm-hmm. it doesn't help the conversation quite frankly sometimes um especially when he says uh dogecoin is the uh currency of the people i i i, I no elon it's not stop that nonsense <laughs> um but but bitcoin here a couple hesitation candles it's not setting up yet i think it still has some time for that 40k break uh, but uh, again, I kind of feel this is a, you know, Frankie, you, you'll remember this one here back on the 20,000 breakout, you know, every day, what do we say? Needs time in the cooker, needs time in the cook. cooker, needs time in the cooker, needs time in the cooker. It's got the time in the cooker. Now let's rock, right? Yep. Well, it, it's kind of in that range now, whereas, yeah, nobody likes this. Nobody likes to trade in that. That's a nightmare. But now you're starting to see the double bottom there at 2930. Now you're starting to see the constructive intraday analysis here over the last few days that we've been analyzing in the halftime report. And you got a couple hesitation candles, a little Alan Iverson and two-step dance there you're coming into that 40k so again we're in that time for the cooker let's see if we can get it so we're we're, we're prepping the mill frankie we're prepping it, the mill ex- exactly right? yeah and it, i would i would love to see a slight dip you know into uh, into those moving averages then another run and we're knocking on the door at 40 uh next friday when we t- talk that would be a really yeah. good pattern in my mind yeah, and, and and I'm thinking the same thing. And again, Bitcoin's not going to listen to us and give oh, us. Oh no, what you we can want, ask, right? but you can't it's expect. Like, <laughs> it's kind of like when I was nine years old and my mother truly did give me a lump of coal for Christmas. I didn't want it, I didn't like it, but she still gave it to me. So in terms of this, give us a little time in the cooker. Let's ask for it. If we get it, fantastic. If we don't, so what? It's going to do what it wants to do. But uh, we are we are getting ready to get in that cooker and let it cook a little bit. Are you still crying about that? Yeah, hell yeah, I'm still <laughs> crying about that. Why would your mother give somebody a nine year old a, 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 a lump of coal? I wanted a radio remote control car and I got a lump of coal and I was shaking around for like 30 straight days. I'm like, I really think it's no. a, I really uh-huh. think it's a remote uh, control car. And it wasn't. It was a black piece of coal here's the problem everybody in my family is laughing at me like terrible human beings and here's this nine-year-old in just in tears getting humiliated in front of all of his loved ones who obviously don't love him very much <laughs> i'm not over it so you're still crying about it <laughs> oh, yeah. to answer your question no he's yes he's still crying <laughs> I'm not over it. By the way, that's not yeah. the full story. Uh, he also got a bike right out there. Oh, boy, that's five a minutes. full story. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the halftime report. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Uh, by the way, while we're talking dollar crypto all of it, uh, there was uh, you know a Senate resolution got passed at 5:30 in the morning this morning. Senate was up all night uh, moving that conversation forward with stimulus. Uh, looks like end of February, early March is what they're targeting there with with that maybe impacting currency markets. Let's keep moving through here. Let's go to stock talk next, guys. Uh, let's uh, you know break some some stocks oh, I down. Had, I had so much to say on stimulus today. Nah. <laughs> Come on, the Senate so set it much. off. They stayed up till five o'clock in the morning. What are they? Yeah, <laughs> but they stayed up till five o'clock in the morning, just basically 
throwing kisses at one another. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I, I actually don't have anything to say on stimulus today. It's a budget reconciliation process. It's going to play out. They're, they got the votes. It's just a matter of how much do they want to play it uh, bipartisan. And it does signal like, look, guys, Biden can get that $1.9 trillion. That's not a question at this point. He can get whatever he wants of that $1.9 trillion. Uh, that's one of the reasons why obviously the market is responding so well this week is that we know Biden can get to that 1.9 trillion if he chooses to. Uh, my hope is is that Biden chooses to go this in a bipartisan format. It brings in the Republicans to uh, handle some of those conversations as well. We'll see how it plays out, but it does look like this is going to be a done deal by the end of February. Mm-hmm. Uh, stock talk out there hashtag team tackle by the way if you're uh, a veteran of our community we always appreciate you represent and uh, if you're brand new watching the show uh, give me a thumbs up subscribe c- click the bell come back and join us we do this every day whenever the markets are live uh, let's talk companies here guys uh, we yep. got a few earnings roundup I want to get to Frank Scott charts I got a couple other new uh, news items I want to get through as well uh, why don't we start with earnings Matt uh, I know that well it, it's it's communication day here on uh, in earnings roundup I got six stocks T-Mobile Snapchat, Activision, Pinterest, Ford, and Wynn Resorts. Four of those are communication type stocks. And the communication space has just been absolutely on fire ever since. Yep, Netflix, ladies and gentlemen. Netflix called it, nailed it, and you saw what happened on it. Then it nailed the retracement through the GameStop meme week, and then it was off to the races. But on the backs of some really, really, really good earnings numbers coming out of the communication space. And we're going to start here today with Tim's favorites, T-Mobile. Uh, T-Mobile, a little bit down on the day here today on T-Mobile, as they did warn of some additional costs uh, uh, in relation to the Sprint merger in 2021. They are going to be converting a lot of those Sprint customers onto the the T-Mobile network, and so they do have additional costs relative to that. That's what's really kind of driving the price here today. Overall, though, raw numbers were actually really, really good out of T-Mobile. And T-Mobile's not doing anything in the short term, just consolidation and neutrality after a fairly consistent uh, growth trend over the course of the last year. But again, nothing to see here from a technical perspective. But T-Mobile, I got to give some raw numbers, though. Dollar oh three versus the fifty one cent expectation, twenty point three billion versus twenty billion expectation. Again, raw numbers pretty decent. Warned of additional cost in 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 relation to the Sprint merger down on the day. Uh, For T-Mobile investors out there, these numbers are not going to scare them. The additional cost to the Sprint merger was well known ahead of time, so this should not be surprising uh, to anybody. I just kind of feel like this is a profit-taking moment coming into communications for T-Mobile more than anything else. And on anything from, an, uh, you know, hey, should T-Mobile be on a radar? I don't know if T-Mobile should be on the radar in the short term, but if we ever start threatening that 134 level again, that could be a nice little breakout. And breakouts on the weekly chart here on T-Mobile have been good position trades. So the only thing really to keep an eye on on T-Mobile is that weekly breakout if we ever do get it, but it's nowhere near there. Let's move Move on to Activision here, Tim, today. Uh, you know, I broke down EA's uh, EA Sports uh, earnings earlier this week, and they just had an absolute god-awful earnings report. And I said, you know what, guys? Uh, my hope is, because we don't know what's going to happen, uh, happen on the earnings numbers, but I said, my hope is is that this guidance, because it wasn't the raw numbers in EA, and it's not the raw numbers in Activision here today uh, uh, either, But my hope was that their guidance for 2021, which is the number one thing I was looking at in in Activision here today, or last night, I should say, that their guidance did not get clipped the same way EA's uh, EA's guidance got clipped this, uh, this quarter and this year. And Activision said, nope, we're good, guys. We got Call of Duty, we got Warcraft, and we got Candy Crush, and, and, and that's really all we need because Rockstar coming out of at least their guidance. Raw numbers, pretty decent. Raw numbers, pretty decent. Uh, Activision uh, Blizzard reports $1.13 a share versus the expectation of $1.10. Revenue did come in slightly south of the expectation at $2.4 billion, which did represent a 21.5% increase in revenue. Uh, That does not tell the story. What tells the story, though, is first quarter guidance, first quarter guidance for Activision. Once again, 
EA aggressively lowered their first quarter guidance. EA's loss is Call of Duty's gain because Activision raised their EPS guidance by a whopping 23 cents to 84 cents from the expectation of 61. Revenue increased from 1.65 billion to $2 billion in expectation. The gap is completely understandable, is especially given the backdrop of what e, uh, of the terrible nature of the EA guidance that we saw from yesterday. Now from, you know, obviously a lot of our community invest in uh, Activision. It's been a tackle 25 stock for, uh, for years now. It's obviously been our pick and all the gamings for forever now. And they're not going to be, uh, they're not going to be, you know, they're not going to be, they're not looking to sell this report is, is, is what we're looking at. We're looking at a scenario where positive report, positive performance, completely understandable. The gap was aggressive, a little bit more aggressive than what was anticipated coming into the futures yesterday. Little bit of an overextended scenario, in my opinion, and especially testing up, fading down, and look at that little support level. It's tiny, it's not confirmed. But if you'll drive this down into that one, that five minute chart, you'll see that little tick right there. And I know that's just a one data point tick, guys, but that one data point tick, that one data point tick on a one minute chart was $100. That was not an individual, that was an algorithm. What that means is this $100 is a significant whole number. It's a very known support level that is going to always impact the market. If this level is clipped, we could have a really good, nice gap fill bullish retracement type analysis coming on the back half of next week. If the gap ranges holds and 100 ultimately becomes that support level, we could have a good trade on that high base as well. So it, it's again, Time in the cooker, give it a little bit of time. Let's let it set up. But Blizzard, Activism Blizzard, kudos to you today. Robust, Call of Duty, Candy Crush. Oh my God, I think everybody in the world is on Candy Crush. Must be. Um, I, I mean, <laughs> there's, I think they rival Facebook user base at this point. Uh, but, and that might be shocking to a lot of people to understand. Like when they think Activision Blizzard, like, oh man, Call of Duty and, you know, Warcraft and how much money. No. No, 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 no. Those those micro dose transactions on Candy Crush, yeah, are the are, are just a they're they're an ATM for for Activision. They are yeah. literally the ATM for Activision, and I think it does spit out Bitcoin instead of U.S. dollars. <laughs> so so here, keep an eye on it, guys. Let's see how it navigates that hundred dollar mark. Either way, whether you clip and you form a little flag of retracement down into the ninety five to ninety six range. Fantastic. If it forms a little high base, we can trigger above. Fantastic as well. Just need a little bit of time in that cooker. Let's move on to the twins here in Snapchat and Pinterest. Snapchat here today. You know, we uh, I said this on both Snapchat and Pinterest. Both had very good quarters. Expectations were fairly substantial. And, and they did have some front-running behavior coming into the earnings. And so those are typically things that sets the bar a little bit higher for us in the market. Uh, Snapchat reports earnings of nine cents a share versus the expectation of seven cents. Revenue beat the expectation, 911 uh, versus 846. Revenue did increase 62, a whopping 62.5% uh, uh, here on Snapchat year over year. They did note two different things to keep just in your, it, it just kind of just to be aware of. They warned of the same thing that Facebook warned of with the Apple, uh, the new Apple privacy and how that could impact their revenue models with advertising and specifically targeted advertising that Facebook loves to do. Snapchat warned of the same thing. And they also just, they didn't warn of this. They just noted that due to the, the, uh, the January, however you want to categorize it at this point, insurrection, protests, don't even care at this point, but however you want to categorize it during that two week time frame where all the social media channels shut down political advertising, Snapchat did indicate that they did have fairly substantial interruptions in their revenue model from an advertising perspective. Outside of that, pretty decent numbers. The, earn, the, the revenue number is 62.5% is, is, is a very good number. And then the beat on EPS is going to be good. The market did test lower 
tested the breakout. And, and when I was looking at this earlier today, Tim, mm -hmm. I was looking at it kind of here in this retracement down around 56, 57. Mm -hmm. So it's like right into this range, 57. I was like, hey, we might have a little bit of a debate on this in the scouting report meeting because this is a little bit of an overreaction based on that mm -hmm. Apple news market market gobbled it up and probably took out that trigger but snapchat I, I i don't think it needs a lot of time you are clipping 60 and you could momentum trade this but momentum off of earnings uh, the, i typically like a little bit of time after earnings really and and more than anything guys just to really see how the market is truly digesting this news because specifically on snapchat down on the cash open, gobbled up throughout the internet, mixed analysis on the actual raw numbers. I think this is an obvious one where, yeah, you could momentum trade it, but there's a little mixed, uh, a little mixed data, a little mixed analysis in the data, quite frankly. Maybe you give Snapchat a little, a uh, couple days if uh, Snapchat's on your watch list. Pinterest uh, here, Pinterest comes out and reports 43 cents a share versus the expectation of 32. They added uh, 600, uh, they, they don't report revenue, so I don't know what their revenue number was off the, uh, off the top, but it was expected to get into 645. I think they beat that as well. Uh, but here's, here's the two big numbers here and what sent Pinterest you know, uh, uh, to the moon, at least on the uh, cash open here, obviously fading throughout the, the, the rest of the trading day. We'll see what happens on Pinterest forming a bullish retracement or a flag next week. But they said they did increase revenue guidance specifically, and they added over a, a, a fairly robust number for Pinterest here, guys. They added over 100 million subscribers in 2020. Wow. Over a hundred million subscribers. And once again, I'll remind people why Pinterest was a dirty, sexy money Canada for us in 2019, excuse me, in 2020. And Pinterest in 2020 had a robust year, but it was a dirty, sexy money Canada for us more than some of the other social media up, uh, you know, flyers like the Twitters of the world or the, you know, Snapchats of the world. Because of the reason why people go to Pinterest, they go there to get marketed to, and they just had a hundred million new subscribers to go to Pinterest to get marketed to. And so fairly decent report out of Pinterest, a little bit of a mix on, on some of the revenue, but pretty decent report. Let's see how the market responds next week, especially given the fact that we had ran in, into earnings. We did have a robust quarter in front of it. And we have mixed data coming in on the gap versus the market performance here today. So I think this is an obvious, you know, put it in the cook, cooker and let's see how support plays out next week. Uh, the last two I'll do fairly quickly here. Ford Motor here reports uh, a really good beat for Ford here today. 34 cents. And maybe it's just my old school growing up in central Utah, you know, uh, working, you know, building houses and, you know, working with our hands with our with our old man back in the day. But I always celebrate when old Ford it has a good report here it makes me feel like and i know this makes no sense but it just makes me feel like like i'm just proud of america for some reason <laughs> uh, but ford here reports 34 cents a share versus the expectation of a negative seven cents a share guys so a really 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 good beat out of, uh, out of the eps numbers revenue also came in above the expectation of 36 billion versus uh the uh the the, the expectation of 32.9 that did represent 9.4 percent decrease uh one warning Ford gave in their conference call is they warned of uh, supply side shortages specifically to semiconductors and I made this uh, complaint before Frank you can complain about this I know you just bought a new computer yeah those those, those are real man there are shortages in semiconductors out there yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah Ford did warn of that as well but the big news on Ford outside of their uh, performance on EPS numbers here today uh, very similar to what was seen out of GM and the traditional car manufacturers in recent history, Ford here signals they're doubling down on EV guys. Every one of these car manufacturers are sick and tired of paying millions and millions and millions in EV credits every single quarter. Ford doubles down on the EV movement, doubles their investment up to $22 billion, and uh, they're looking to be in production by 2025. So uh, Ford signals that, uh, yeah, we all want to compete with Tesla these days. We all want that cult following the Tesla has these days. And Ford and GM are both uh, both targeting Tesla and seeing what they can do to uh, cut into the EV credits and 
you know, cut into the same thing. Apple, the, uh, Apple's doing with the Apple Car, cutting into Tesla's domination in in uh, EV, not mobility, but EV. Mm-hmm. The EV movement never going away, and we're seeing this from GM and Ford here recently. Mark, uh, obviously, he's got that can create a little bit of a juice uh, backdrop, and stocks have done pretty well over the last six, eight months, uh, like messed much of the market. Uh, but uh, I like Ford. I like Ford here over time. Uh, that it, Matt? You any more? Honestly, I think you got to be looking at Ford. Nice, healthy trend here. Past earnings, you got to, you know, took whatever the market punched it, took whatever the response was. Now you got to, you know, bullish retracement, breakout momentum. Uh, momentum candidate here weekly chart looks like that 1215 handle is legitimate i just wanted to check that wick to see if that wick was important that wick is important it is confirmed over here so the 1215 wick is important is important but i do like uh, ford above 1215 here guys so uh, keep an eye on ford above 1215 i will be talking to the uh, coaches later on today uh, regarding what they feel of Ford. And then last, Tim, I wanted to bring up Wynn Resorts. The uh, casinos here are running across the board. You know, Penn National Gaming had a, in my opinion, and, oh, yeah, I'll just say it. They had a god-awful report. It was a terrible report. I have no clue why it's going up. But, it, from, well, yes, I do. It's all technical movements and the euphoria of the moment. But the report was not justified, in my opinion pens running when you look at a lot like mgm look at mgm mgm's running when you look at you know uh, dk and uh, dk and g draft kings draft kings running you're having some legitimate movement in this space czr that's moving you know caesars is uh, one of our dsm candidates for uh, for this year so you're having a lot of movement in this space which is going to bring up a lot of these bad economic reports and you're seeing that today in win national uh, in win uh, casinos here reports negative two dollars and 45 cents a share versus the expectation of a negative 222 revenue numbers came in underneath the expectation and guys these expectations are all low bar expectations at the casino casinos they did not meet that low bar expectation came in at 686 revenue did decrease six uh close to 60 percent at 58.5 percent year over year you guys i i know it's not as bad as last quarter and maybe that's the only thing that justifies price movement today but again these are these are some earnings numbers that you know you're, you saw some front running and win resorts up six percent but i'm not a chaser here i i, I just it, this soon after earnings, I just don't, I, I just can't, I can't overcome the silliness of the price action. Sometimes I just can't do it. I think you're a hundred percent justified in what you just said. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to chase things. I mean, why chase things when Activision reports, increasing guidance, not, like Pinterest adds over a hundred million. There's so many positives here. And then when you look at some of these casinos and you're like, like these reports are, are, are bad and they're running more aggressive than anything in the market this week. Like it just, I get front running behavior, but on the backs of bad numbers, I'm just sorry. I, I, I get it. There are other people that can paint that pig better than I can. I just can't overcome that. So I think there's better areas of the market that are more fundamentally sound and are running just as well. So I think, I think this is an area that I'm going to be a little shy from, mm-hmm. but again, teach their own. That's fair. I mean, uh, obviously, if you're in some of those momentum names, uh, they've had huge run ups. Uh, I still one of the data points that just grabbed my attention this week. We talked about it yesterday. When casino is cheaper than Penn National Gaming in market cap and stock price. And that still just baffles my mind a little bit. I got to be honest. But 2021, I guess, uh, you know, one other news item I had, then we're going to get to Frank's charts is just Johnson. Yeah, that's, that's all the earnings, earnings I had. Earnings roundup is done. Very good. For the Very week. Good. You know how happy that makes me. Hold on. You know how happy earnings roundup is. Let's give you a moment for that. Let's let's all like. (laughs) Yes, crow crow enough for both of us. (laughs) Because I'm happy too. It was wow. Frank, doesn't it make you so happy to know that Matt is doing the heavy lifting and the hard work going through those earnings numbers for you? No, it doesn't. (laughs) I got about twenty-five stocks under five bucks. I own. Can you start doing earnings roundup on those stocks if I give you the list? Yeah, I'll tell you, Mark. (laughs) You specifically, maybe other people, but you specifically do not want to hear what I have to say about the junk you trade and their terrible earnings performance. Well, so I you know stay, I'm... you stay on your cloud nine and in your, your 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 little bubble of euphoria. Dude, all I know, as the police said, I'm sending you an SOS. Is all I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm not taking that. Uh, <laughs> no. 
sending you an SOS. <laughs> I had to just to get just to curl a little bit. It's still a terrible trade. <laughs> oh yeah, it was. Uh, whoa, whoa, I recommended it. I don't Johnson and Johnson. Yeah, you recommended <laughs> it too. I get it. It doubled. You can crawl a little bit. <laughs> I still maintain that's a god awful tactical trend. It is. Uh, it's choppy. Uh, Johnson, Johnson, real quick. Listen, one news item I, just, I want to talk. Just, Go ahead. Just I, all I want to say is I just prefer Microsoft. Yeah, or the CRM breakout, or whatever. Or, or, we got, or, you listen. know the one I really, really, really like, though? And for more oh, of Matt God. telling me that my money-making picks are off, check out Cash for Trash this coming oh, Monday. <laughs> Halftime report. <laughs> nice. And I will tell them those are awful, them too. Um, but uh, the one the one that uh, people need to be waking up to a little bit, and we're, we're going to have a very – this little primer, because we're going to have a great uh, mm-hmm. scanner report meeting later on today, but – I can't wait to get the coaches' takes on Zoom and how they're going to map out how to trade this before earnings. And I before. can't remember if it was Tyler or Greg, but on Wednesday nights, uh, Trade Masters. Uh, if Mike, it was I Tyler, mean, he's going to have a court case against you, buddy. I can't remember if it was Greg <laughs> or Tyler, but one of them brought up uh, Zoom, broke it down. I'm just uh, saying, another we could great check pick. The Listen, no, and Tyler, he's going to claim it either way, right? Well, Linda, will let, <laughs> Linda will, Linda let, will us let us know. If Tyler brought up Zoom, there oh, you go. Yeah, there's some ju- there's some questionable <laughs> judge tactics there. I'm just right. saying, um, but yeah. So you, yeah, that's you, a that 400 break is very legit. Decent. That's pretty very decent. legit. All right, I don't want I don't want to steal Frank's picks though. Frank's Frank's charts here. Tim, take it over. One news item before Frank's charts. Johnson and Johnson, real quick. Uh, you know, obviously, vaccine rollout, vaccinations are going to be a big part of the storyline, not only for the market, the economy, but also just humanity over the next six months. And JNJ did uh, get requested US FDA for an emergency use of its COVID-19 shot uh, after releasing data of its effectiveness, so on and so forth. It's looking to get that approved and get it out on the market. It's the only single dose vaccine uh, available right now. Well, so it's it, making some progress on that. You're right. And, and just from a vaccine, I think, um, you know, we were, the target starting in January was we were hoping to average about a million, uh, million doses per day. Um, I mean, honestly, quite frankly, guys, give credit where credit's due. We're averaging north of 1.3 million so far. Uh, mm-hmm. Right now, you got good uh, you got good headwinds uh, or excuse me, good tailwinds behind you on the vaccine rollout. More than likely, they're going to be getting up towards that 1.5 million you know doses per day, and we got a long haul to get. We need to get around two million doses per day to get to where we want to go. Um, but uh, again, we always want this to be done in, in real time. But I, I, I said this a couple months ago. The vaccine was a very difficult challenge, and you got to give President Trump a hell of a lot of credit for putting pressure on those pharmaceutical companies to get this done last year. The vaccine rollout is as big of a challenge, and, and, and I hope to God that every American wishes Biden all the success in the world on this one because he's, he's, got, a, he's got a hell of a job in front of him, got a lot of work to do. And the more support he gets from 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 America, the better it's going to be in that capacity. So, it, you know, good good for uh, the vaccine rollout here and Johnson and Johnson specifically, Tim. You know, whereas uh, the Moderna vaccine, you got to go, you got to uh, you know uh, travel in. I don't even know what the temp is, but it's like negative thirty degrees or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, Pfizer's a two dose. This is a one dose that gets to be stored in like forty degree, you know, uh, temperatures. So. Yeah. Maybe, and I know their overall numbers aren't as good as the other two vaccines, but you know, all positive on that front, though. I agree, hundred uh, percent. All right, uh, Frankie, this is what right. the people come for. We are not going to delay it. Uh, in fact, I need like some big intro and music. Marky, can I put you on the spot? Can you introduce Frank and the importance and the greatness of his chart selection? <laughs> On the spot. All right. <laughs> Obviously, that sounds like a no. You see how much faith Mark has in me. That sounded like a no. <laughs> like, uh, and in this corner, weighing in at 210 pounds, he is the champ. He is the dominator. He is the man from Price, Utah, bringing you your breakout trades. If you like money, you're going to pay attention in the next 10 minutes. Get your order entries ready. Frank, the tank. <laughs> Martin. <laughs> very nice. Very, very nice. Thank you very much for that, Mark. Do appreciate it. And Matt, I would appreciate you getting uh, the right set X's coming for you for my intro. Uh, yes. you, so I have a theme song I, too. I, and I, 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 I keep Mark as my hype man. X is coming for yeah, I'll, 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 I, No, no. I want to be behind <laughs> you like doing the mic bound. I'll be... 
like I'll get my hoodie on, I'll have the mic, and I, I'll be, right. I'll be. Give me, give me an artist that I know, and I will have you a theme song. So wait, so for, so Marsh, your hype man, and I'm the guy that's right behind, just patting you on the back, being like, "You're gonna kill this man. You're going Oh yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay. You need, you need, you need a full crew. You're, you need. You're a gonna crew. kill this, Pip Frank. You're gonna kill this segment. Let's I, go get some, Frankie. I don't want to go off the rails here, but can you imagine being the corner hype man for Peter McNeely when he had to go out and fight Mike Tyson? Listen, it'd be it'd be <laughs> like my coach in my ninth grade basketball team. If you lose by 50, I'm proud of you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Frankie. Nice, nice. All right, uh, let's start with a couple from the chat. Uh, there were a couple interesting charts the team was sharing with us. Uh, A-R-W-R, if you don't mind. Frankie, you uh, took one of my picks there, buddy. I took oh one of God. G's picks too. <laughs> yeah. All right, break out on a weekly cup and handle. I mean, a daily cup and handle. I assume. Yeah, break out on the on the cup and handle. Nice mm-hmm. movement here today. Uh, very much like uh, was it Snap that uh, that had the little gap down on the open. Uh, gap down on the open fired back, so buyers came in fast and furious, even knowing the resistance was looming right above them obviously we haven't closed yet you haven't closed till you close but this break to me is very legitimate it might be difficult to map a trade uh until we see a little more price action unless you're just kind of going momentum above today's high on on monday morning but i think that might lead to risk reward issues would be my my biggest concern you'd have to momentum trade in i'm not sure arrow is that type of stock to do that I don't know. These uh, guys can can move in, in shape. Move. Well, I, I think what what I would though. yeah. I mean the 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 signal is really solid in my opinion. I think for me, again, the risk reward would be the the kicker, and I think it might be difficult. But you know, that's that's just you what know. What do you think of more, instead of a swing trade, which I can see a swing trade for momentum? What about a position trade? Because I do think it's going to have multiple cycles to get to a hundred. Well, yeah, I think you know from a from a purely technical perspective, I think your best bet you know from from my perspective no would, be, though, would be it's impressive right off that open yeah, no i think this the best place in my mind for a stop loss would be below that low that we put in last week uh that that little pivot go. there which makes it for for a swing trade makes it tough obviously we can go intraday we can go today's low we can do some different things looking at the intraday though it might be difficult without giving it a little bit of time but it doesn't hurt to ask for some time, right? If we can get a little drift back to that breakout channel, if we can get just a little bit of consolidation, mm-hmm. just because right. you, you missed day one doesn't mean what you about have this to miss one, it all, Frankie. right? I, I, yeah, you want to get I, in a swing trade, you'd like to get it underneath that 76 pivot, right? Yep. That's not happening. I mean, no, it's just not, 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 not from a not swing now. trade. It's just not, not yeah, now. it's just no. But, one technique I do like on, on these momentum breakouts when you can't get a stop loss underneath, say, a pivot that you'd like to get a stop loss under is look at the breakout channel here and see. And so you got the breakout channel right there. Yeah, you got that tick there. You got to be low. But I'm looking at this breakout from right here in, in the, the cup handle part. So I'm looking mm-hmm. at that right there, right? And I drop this down into that one hour time frame. And you can kind of see that 84 handle right here. You see that 84 handle right there, right there, right there. You got that 84 handle breakout that's pretty consistent here. And so, yeah, in an environment where you can't get it underneath this 76 handle, which is obvious, then look at the breakout channel because the breakout channel, although it has not confirmed as a support channel, we do know the breakout channel can, i.e. historical resistance, can now become and act as historical support. And so even though it has not been confirmed because we haven't seen the future yet, right, we, we do believe that 84 old resistance can be new, new S. And so I'm looking at that breakout channel and said, OK, if, if you like it on the intraday and again, looking at that 15 minute chart, I mean, what's not to like here? If you like that and you think it's going to maintain, could you map out a scenario where you trigger above, say, 89 above the high here? Maybe it doesn't trigger today. Maybe it triggers on Monday. Maybe you map it out over the weekend. I'm just trying to map out one trade to see if you can do it. And then you say, give me a stop loss underneath that 84 handle. 
you're taking, you'll probably be taking around $5 of risk and you're targeting that hundred dollar mark, Frankie. I mean, you got your two to one at that. What do you think? I think I like everything you just said a little bit more. If we can get one small candle on Monday. It's uh, amazing I, I, what a, one small doji does. What one it? small candle would, yeah. would do from the risk to reward. Uh, I think patience, uh, you know, again, it's, it's, it's very impressive. It's just mm-hmm. the risk to reward. And I would hate to get too clever with a stop loss. I see where you're going and I don't think yeah. it's bad, but man, I'd hate to get stopped out on this breakout. Right. <laughs> and yeah. So no, uh, I think it. this is one that you really like where it is. Maybe it just wants to run. And, and Hey, I would not fault anybody for wanting to, to play, you know, t- today's high on Monday yeah, yeah. morning type of trade at, at all. If they were comfortable on the stop side, I wouldn't be, uh, I don't, mm-hmm. uh, I don't think, but if we could get any sort of consolidation there or, you know, let it run and pull back and test, uh, you know, the rising it's nine, the, pull, the breakout the point, beautiful. Cody special, uh, Cody specials, beautiful. we'll get other opportunities, yeah. right? We don't ever have to, and it doesn't mean I'm, I'm right. And it's my way or the highway. It's that, you know, we'll, there's always another opportunity for us and, yeah. and we want to get it the way you, we, you got we me. want it. To you convinced me. Let's, 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 but a beautiful let's break uh, out. Yeah, it's got to be on the radar. That 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 sure. breakout is pretty technical. Yeah, nice. that's, that definitely belongs in that watch list right. in my mind. Next uh, one. one other from the uh, – quickly, let's talk Zoom. We started our talk on Zoom. Might as well uh, finish it, uh, and then we'll look at a few others uh, from the charts. Uh, what a what a move, right? That 400 break, getting back above the 50-day moving average, breaking out. I mean, you look at this on a weekly, and it's just uh, a really nice-looking weekly retracement, right? This mm-hmm. is a very strong signal, in my opinion, when it comes to Zoom. Uh, um, like you said, yeah, I, think I, I honestly, I, it, I don't think you're going to get a veto here. And if you do, they're going to get chastised so hard in the scatter report meeting that they're going to be shamed to the point of <laughs> removing their veto. And that is Losing. my way of preempting any veto on Zoom. There you I go. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait till one of the coaches who is not watching the halftime. They will, I sure yeah. hope somebody does. <laughs> they will get slaughtered. I'm going to be dead silent. They will, we will all remain quiet as they dig their own grave to them. <laughs> Exactly. Um, but these guys the, are, I mean, this yeah, is, ahead, this is really, really solid price action. You know, we had the, the little failed breakdown right back in December. We double bottom, we come back, kiss the 50, pull back, test the old resistance that we established in early January of support, creating a higher low, taking out resistance here today, creating a higher high. So these are very good signals towards continued upward movement. Right. And, and again, it's, how an individual might map out the trade. You know, Dylan is already in it, right? Uh, You know, I believe uh, from the the chat, uh, somebody, you know, might want to, you know, be selling some out of the money credit spreads. Uh, Some folks might want to wait for that next pullback. I mean, there's, you know, always remember just because there's a bull signal doesn't mean it necessarily means it has to be a bullish trade today, right? But that is a really strong signal to me, at least going forward, uh, whether it's the next trade, you know, know, trade or the next. And, and, and these breakouts we've seen here today, and there's only two here we've looked at in, in Frank's charts, but I mean, aggressive triggers paid off here, guys. And, mm-hmm, and for sure, remember, aggressive triggers above breakout channels is a very viable way to to front run breakouts with confirmation. So, you know, those aggressive triggers and I'll tell you, most coaches, they're aggressive triggers. Right. I mean, we're always going to be the conservative individuals from an analysis perspective, but a lot of traders love aggressive triggers on breakouts. Sometimes for me, I like the market to kind of tell me what's working in the market. I don't like to force aggressive triggers on, but aggressive triggers have been working out in recent history and zoom is no, uh, is, is, is certainly there as well. Uh, Chris asked the question, did we miss the entry on zoom? No, I, I don't think you missed the entry. You're one day on the breakout. This is confirmation. And depending on where you're targeting, Chris, you, 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 you more than likely have your, your one-to-one at T1 and your two-to-one at T2, because I think T1, and, and quite frankly, I know some people will start the conversation at 450. I'm going to up them from an auctioneer perspective, because I think that conversation starts at 275, I mean, at 475 from T1 with the 500 uh, with a $500 target on T2. So I think, I think you got the numbers to justify the trade. So no, you're not laid on it. And then when you look at the, uh, when you drop it down in a 30 minute chart, you see strength, strength, strength. And then you saw a breakout out of a high base, which means if you're an hour late, Chris, if you're an hour late, is that too late on a day trade? Yes. On a swing trade? No. So no, I don't think you're too late. The, the conversation I'm looking forward to though is 
from the coaches is how are you playing this, right? We're talking about a big high flyer in the market where you can certainly just take the, uh, take the easy way out and just trade shares. But you're also talking about something that can be approached in a variety of different option strategies. And, you know, in a lot of our YouTube, you know, type content here, guys, we, 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 we keep it high level a lot. We keep it basic. We talk, you know, directional, you know, your basic Delta uh, strategies and your basic theta strategies. But, you know, when you get uh, a coach Gino into a cash flow club and you, and, and you watch them cook, I mean, they're, they're mapping out different option strategies and different ways to play it from the credit to the volatile, to the Delta perspective. And so, I mean, there's just a different, I mean, quite frankly, there's a different skill set at that level. And so I'm looking forward to hearing from the coaches about specifically, how are they going to play this? If, if somebody like a Tyler saying, yeah, I love this move and I like it. I, you know, I'm, I, I like buying the at the money call and then selling an out of the money call to offset some of the risk after price appreciation, or, you know, just, it just, uh, or maybe if they, if some coaches feel like they missed it from a triggering perspective and maybe they're looking from the credit per, uh, credit side of the equation, there's a lot of ways to play an individual stock like zoom. And, and it's not just directional. So that's the conversation I'm looking forward to is exactly how are these coaches going to go about playing this Zoom breakout? Because it is a beautiful, beautiful breakout, Frank. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's pretty. That is uh, that is very, very pretty. And nice uh, catch on that one, Dylan. A uh, little Cody type of trade, somewhere between a Cody special and a more normal pullback is NNOX. Recent, uh, and, and, and very, very quickly, uh, Dylan, are you talking about profit targets? T1 and T2, 420 yeah. and 490. I think that's what you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, I think yeah, that- you do, you do have a break. You do have a technical trigger at 420 and I would not fault that one, Dylan. It's just on the breakout like that. I think that's more of a day trading trigger and it wasn't really a pivot. It was kind of horizontal. So yes, I certainly see the 421 and that can play a role. Um, But when you're looking at these types of scenarios where you've had prolonged bearish movements to the downside in a prolonged bullish uptrend, there's going to be chop. And when you're identifying the type of chop to target, that's going to be subjective. So I'm not going to I'm not going to fault anybody for 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 looking at 420 and saying, hey, listen, I'm a little concerned at 420. You got some consolidation here. You got a fight right here as well. Neither one could get a, get to that level and break that level, Dylan. But here was one key difference here. In that movement, you had downward moving averages, both the 20 and the 90 MA, put a lot of pressure on that on the downside. I got that more acting as a as as a as a vertical level of resistance and not a horizontal level of resistance. So again, it's subjective, but I personally would not be targeting the 420. Like I said, I think the conversation starts at 450. But I'm looking above this level because Zoom is a high flyer that can destroy whatever glass ceiling you think is there. I'm targeting above that 450. I like the 480 target. I think that's a legitimate target in the T1, T, uh, T2 zone. And so I do think it's there. But again, if you're looking at 450, significant whole number in the zone of that pivot, I wouldn't fault anyone. I think the 420 is a little bit conservative given the fact that you had a lot of moving averages acting as resistance, whereas at this point, they are now acting as support. And I hope that helped you out on that explanation, Dylan. Yeah. And just one thing to add, that's a really good, uh, well said, Maddie. Uh, when you have all that chop on these deeper pullbacks, go to the weekly. It'll help mellow out that noise. You can see, you know, where we actually did see the price action. 420, does, it does not look as resistance there, but 480 does. Yeah, I think I think that really helps clear it out. It's something that you know is, is a legitimate struggle for a lot of traders, right? Because well, everything has almost everything on the way down has been at least a one minute <laughs> level of resistance, it's right? Been, it's been at least something, right? It's been at least it's something. Always and been that's, some, yeah. You know, that's where, but that's where you know the subjective analysis based on people's experiences in identifying technical resistance and support. I mean, it just it comes with time. It just does. Right. But that's why we're all here to have these conversations so that we can get honestly get different people's perspectives from different educational levels and experience levels. Right. Mm-hmm. It's always nice to get Th- another. That's what a community is. It's fantastic. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. We were looking at next up, Maddie, NNOX. 
And I thought about NNOX when I was doing my scanning, Frankie. And wait a second. Maybe I did add it. Hold on. I might have added it. I don't think I did, though. I think I bypassed it for some reason. Um, I think they IPO'd like, back in August, so maybe they didn't have enough price I, history. I do hate that. IPO'd. Or, yeah, so. I, yeah. And that's understandable, and I think that will yeah. eliminate it from a lot of people's radar. Well, uh, when but you're not scanning 4,000 stocks this morning, you, you're, you're going to immediately just blink and move on on some, right? Mm -hmm. So a, Exactly. But if, if, if you are one of the traders that is okay, hey, it's been a while, we've developed some price action, and that tends to be my philosophy with IPOs is let something clear develop right? Whether that's three months or three years, <laughs> sometimes, not these days. Uh, but what, what I really liked about these guys was from a technical perspective is they had their initial run up uh, into, uh, into about 60, you know, 65, 66, uh, took a while, took another shot at it, uh, failed miserably, right? Pulled back, took another run at it, and then broke through that here last week, on a pretty good spike of, of volume, pulling back and testing that old resistance level as a new support zone, uh, mapping out a risk to reward trade here seems to be something that would be fairly easy to do if I were open to this yeah, type of a situation. Pullbacks are always going to be sexy on a uh, reward versus risk ratio. And so that's why they tempt you, right? It's just like, oh my goodness, I can get an eight to one reward to risk ratio. Yeah, deep retracement timing on, that's what you, you can get that. Yes, yes, 100%. Um, and, and, and so they're always, they're always really sexy and they, they really spark that greed a little bit. Um, and we like, I'm not trying to downplay it at all. Like, sure, at all. Yeah, sure, that's sure, why, sure. That's yeah, why we yeah, like That's them, true, right? yeah, that is, yeah, that is one like of their them. selling points. Um, the only problem I have with this one, Frank, is it's, it's not clean. I mean, it's just a choppy, nasty little beast here where big down, up, down, up, you know, those retracements, we'd like to see that. Now on these, uh, because I got a couple others kind of like this, Frankie, uh, the mm -hmm. BGS, the BIG, you know, WSM, uh, all have uh, three, three pretty deep retracements here this week as well. We're going to discuss SFIX, another deep retrace there. So I'm sure what I'm saying on this one, I can say on those ones too. Right. Um, so I, I, what I like about, let's start with what I like about it. I love this support level at 64. Like I really love that. Got a lot level. of good reason to like that price. Point. Old, old resistance, new support, nice little moving average cluster here. Intraday. You got to like that support level. You look at that on the weekly chart, you know, you're fighting as uh, from a defensive nature. You're fighting as that is uh, as that support level. And this, uh, the second thing I like is this thing can just absolutely just fly. I mean, this nobody's surprised if we're dinging 90 or 100 next week. And I like that. I like that type of price ability. And I like that type of price movement. And I like that type of volatility. But that also leads into what you don't like about it because of the uncertain nature of the technical, you know, retracement, knowing it can absolutely fly, it could also go down and test $40 like it's nobody's business as well. So I, I, I wouldn't say you have a very high probability setup, but if you can map out a decent reward to risk ratio, uh, you know, keeping into mind that you're targeting 90 and not 100 on T1, T2 would probably be 100 uh -huh. and the stop loss absolutely fundamentally has to be under 64 like like there's yeah. there's no discussion up here no like, no but, i would say at the bare minimum you need a stop loss below that that rising 20 uh yep. it's got to be below the breakout yep. channel uh it doesn't need to take six seven dollars risk on a 70 dollar stock i think it's a solid play but yeah, I, see, I like I, and I like I the put way that, that on my watch list. I <laughs> like the price action today because it makes sense. You know, after the the bounce up, it's ran right into the 50 on that hourly, which acted yeah. as resistance and pushes down. Uh, I would look at, you know, breaking back above that as my signal to uh, to the bull side. I do agree with you. Uh, you know, you're not going to have the, the same probability, right? Does something no, that's got the momentum no. already established. It's a 50-50, hopefully hit a home run and sometimes you strike out. That's it right there. So, yeah, exactly. But the catalyst, I love what we have working for us here. That's why I prefer it to some of the other, you know, deeper retracements is we've got really good support catalysts, a lot of reasons to tempt some buyers, whether it's enough 
enough. We'll have to wait till next week to find out. I, but certainly an interesting, uh, an interesting name. Uh, somebody here's, might here's be the, the first only time I've looked at him. I, I do have concern, but I guess the one question I have as we're continuing the conversation here, if you wait for confirmation, guys, you might be waiting too long on this one, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, confirmation's above 73. And so if you're waiting right now, for yeah. It, it has to that. be. And so if, if, you're, right now if you're waiting for above, now if we get some more analysis next week, right? Give us a couple of different interday levels down here. That's a different beast. But as of right now, I would say it's 73, which with an ATR that's rocking as high as this one is, you know, I mean, what's the ATR on this bad well, boy it, right now? Like, I've, you know, I've got it mapped out 10? a little bit already. And it's going to put you, you uh, know, could I agree with the 90, 100? It's, it's uh, close, bro. It puts you about two to one on 90 as it currently stands, as I would build it, I above today's mm -hmm. high and below the 20 day moving average, put you about two, uh, two to one at 90 and about three to one at 100. So it's certainly not for everybody. Uh, I thought it was uh, worth keeping. I'm with Mark. I'm going to keep it in my watch list. Uh, but I certainly understand the arguments to, to look elsewhere. I think uh, I, there's no, there's I, I love the support level and I'm not I, like I'm not trying to throw cold water on it. No, no, all. no. Can't trade I'm them just, all, right? I'm just saying it is choppy in the last week, and I just don't know if if you get it in at above above 73. You're, I mean, with the 10 ATR, you're getting in at probably 74 and change most likely. Stop loss isn't going to be 64; it's going to be 62 and change. Mm -hmm. And so, and so you're taking you're taking it, it's it's yeah. I mean, it's it's there. It's a good trade. If 64 holds, it could be a great trade. I, I, I'm, I just don't like the chop the last week. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's the beauty of trading. You don't have to, you don't have to trade anything. Oh, you don't there's a like lot for whatever candidates. your reasons are. Right. Uh, well, and that's a, uh, I just think we have like 10 really good retracements this week and they're all going to be pretty decent. It's just a matter of which one do you like the most, which yeah, picture gonna, do you like the yep, most? There's going to be chart. off. Yep. Yep. There's going yeah, to that be chart uh, looks options. like everything I trade. I know. Right maybe now. that's my problem. I'm having PTSD so, from Mark's may, nonsense. See, maybe maybe Mark hyping me up made me like his style a little bit more. <laughs> Frankie, Frankie, <laughs> so, I, we can only have one penny pinching Mark, and in, 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 like, uh, listen, I could to. I could never keep I could never keep up with him on that stuff. I'll, I'll let no, him. no, he geeks out Back. on it. He loves that. That's Ground. his playpen. All right, let's let's talk team right. T E A M. Are you, are you doing the flag or the break? Well, I think this is one of those where you could at least legitimately uh, take a look at the scaling in technique, mm -hmm. moving in half position on the flag, initiating the second half of the position, because the, the big signal is going to be the break of the 250 approximately resistance level, right? That's, yep. that's our true signal. And at the end of the day, if 250 holds, can't be terribly surprised because it has smacked us a couple times already. But if we could make uh, risk to reward work, playing the flag to that resistance level, I would be personally open to scaling in, uh, working at half the okay. position. One of the things I also like about this is last Friday when the market was selling off, team was climbing. Okay. Yeah, I, I like yeah. the price action. I like um, where we're at. It's just, I don't know that you'd be able to get the risk to reward that you liked playing the flag, Maddie. I think that would be uh, up to you. No, I, I That's think okay, you could, I think you scale. Because the break is what I'm looking for, right? The 250 break I know, but is kind of like what it's I setting, Frankie. Sure. I, I listen. I if if the risk to reward is there, if you can get that to work, and I'm just uh, sneaking over here to see if I can, just without doing too big big of a deep dive here. Right, you're uh, one to one at 250 because it's stock close. Is right under 240. It's close yeah. enough to justify the scaling in because you're really playing the breakout is what you're doing. Yep. Um, and the reason I like it here is number one, I like the 240 support level. Watch that 9 EMA catch up and that's going horizontal at night at 240 over the last three days. So you, I like that support level first. That that's If you don't like the support level, you should move on. Like, Agreed. Like Agreed. That's, it, that's either, everything. Yep. If you don't like it, you either put it on the breakout list or, or move yep. on to something you do like. Absolutely. Yep. And so I like this 240 handle here. I like the horizontal nature of it. What I really like, though, over the last three days, if you look at this on that 30 minute chart and, and you can see the strength of that 240 support level, you know, 
right there, resistance, right there, resistance, and now support, and now confirm support over here. And so you have a fairly consistent 40 degree angle per, uh, pressing down on that 30 minute chart. You got a horizontal support level, slowing momentum, and then it breaks out right there. Now, obviously, you'd like to get it above you know, that 50 day moving average on the, on the inner day, may, it may be even above that little wick right there at 244, Frankie. So you're getting it above 244 here, stop loss underneath 240. You're scaling into the play, playing basically the front running breakout uh, routine here. You scale in a little, you dip your toe in a little here, just to prepare for, because if we do get that breakout, because what we've been seeing in breakouts a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit, is there's orders up here above 250. Yep. And if you believe there's orders here above 250, mm -hmm. we could see one of those environments where you scale in here. You hit you 250 that and order you just fly there, to 260. <laughs> and then you just trigger all the way to 260. Right. Okay. You don't have the so, control, right? You don't know how it's yeah, going to play there. out the break. I, I like it. Mark, what do you think on that one? I, I love the breakout <laughs> potential here, right? I just absolutely love it. Uh, I like the, the – uh, there's a lot to like here. I like the scaling in. There's a lot to like here. There's a lot to like here. Yeah, it's really, really clean. Just, and if you don't I mean, like the scaling in know, idea, well, go know ahead, your Mark. stock personality, though. Breakouts, um, like, you know, just like the one we had in October here, right? They can be a little choppy on team. Mm -hmm. a, team it, it, a team has a very unique personality. Uh, but there's, a, there's some potential here. Tight stops have a hard time with team. Um, when you look mm -hmm. back at all, you know, some yeah. of the, some of the price, it, it, it's got, it's got wick stop out potential, yeah. yeah. you know? And so, so you got to realize tight stops have a hard time with team, but I think there's a lot to like here here. And here's the thing with the tight stop because two under two forty is a tight stop. But if the pl map, if the plan works out mapped out and you're playing the, just the scale land, a stop under two forty on a breakout of two fifty is not tight. Mm-hmm. The, the breakout potential here is yeah. really nice. Yep. Love it. Any more, Frankie? Uh, um, yeah, let's look at uh, just one or two more, and then we'll uh, wrap up. I know we're pushing uh, pushing the clock here a little bit. Um, I want to throw this one to Mark, and this is his uh, Taiwan Semiconductor, TSM. I've missed so many trades on this stupid company. <laughs> so, well, that's, uh, that's all right. Maybe you can catch uh, the next one. Uh, much like a lot of the market, we're kind of halfway between support and resistance, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Unlike maybe some of the rest of the market, we have this little four-day sideways. I'm not saying this is ready to rock and party on Monday morning. It might be. I don't know. But that's not what it's kind of looking like. But what I do like is it kind of came out of that little flag. We were testing those moving averages, establishing, you know, if you go to something like an hourly time frame, you're going to see a very clear range that we've set up right a clear ceiling a clear floor i think if we can push hold that support first off i see i do think we want to hold that and push through that resistance uh, the trend obviously has been very strong and, and taiwan has certainly been one of the the better semis as yeah. of late uh mark could i talk you into a directional play this is gonna be tough uh, if, uh, if we if we take out this little four-day range uh, I need a couple more weeks of consolidation on that. <laughs> so that's a no he did, probably. He didn't want to take, he didn't want to, he didn't want, you said directional. Yeah, he, I, need a, I need a vacation. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, just, I, mean, I mean, Frank, hold on. Frank, he took his 10 second day trade earlier to this week and he's good for the year. <laughs> Listen, uh, the, 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 the Taiwan ones I like is like when the nine weekly catches up yeah. and then it get a little support. And we've seen a couple really good trades on Taiwan uh, last year on this, where it will go sideways for a couple months or five weeks, build up that consolidation. I mean, there's been a lot of winning trades on Taiwan. Um, I'm just going to be greedy on my setup. Uh, sure. wait I, I, I figured you would say no, by the way. I did not, uh, I did not think you were, I was going to be able to sign you up, but I know my man, Tim, uh, Tim, can uh, I sign you up? <laughs> Listen, <clears throat> any setup on Taiwan Semiconductor, I'm interested in, period. I love the company, the fundamentals, it served me well. You know, so when you have familiarity around a stock like that, and it's already on your long-term watch list, you've got it, you know, the fundamentals kind of nailed down. I could be interested in a directional trade after that little consolidation. I don't need two more weeks. If I get a signal, now how I play that, and go back to TSM for a minute uh, there, Matt, if you can. 
this might also be a candidate for a scale in situation for me, Frank, uh, you know, maybe like a half position, see it run up to the 136, then reassess it if I can get a breakout from there. Right. Yeah. Um, so I might even approach it that way, but yeah, <clears throat> you know, I know there's a momentum shift a little bit here. I know there's some concern in that. I just don't miss signals on that stock personally. So well, your signal isn't on the stock. It's on the sector. You should be you should be triggering based on the semiconductor sector, but and I wasn't looking at uh, this one here today, but I was looking at applied materials, and it's, it's pretty much the exact same analysis. I think the one on um, Taiwan is a much cleaner trigger, mm -hmm. you know, on Taiwan at 130. So I certainly see that, but the entire sector is doing the the same thing here. Yeah, I mean, semis week. usually run together, right? Yeah. Broadly, so, broadly speaking. Yeah. So I, I, whatever your cup of flavor mm -hmm. is over there, that's fine. I'm just saying, like, let's 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 see the let's see the sector do it too. Top I, down. I just think this is one of those ones you you need to top down approach this one. Fair. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's it fair looks as well. pretty similar to uh, to the sector as a whole. I would definitely yeah. agree with that. All right. Uh, Frank, Pull I got back. a couple for you, buddy. Okay, give me, uh, give, me give me one more, and then I'll one take uh, yours. And uh, this one is interesting. I, and because... I'll just give you a couple, Frankie. Okay, good deal. And that's uh, Berkshire, BRK.B. Uh, oh. So we've been watching for, well, we, me and I guess my dog, have been watching for a breakout you, on me, these guys. Dog, <laughs> for <a while>. right. <laughs> we're uh, getting you know. it right before Ernie's, Frankie. We're getting it. So there we go. We got about uh, two and a half weeks, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we pushed through today. Right now, we're, I think, technically, you know, technically, if we close right now, we would close uh, above that resistance level. Obviously, it's going to looks like it wants to come down to the wire. Uh, but for the first time in a bit, we've actually broken through that resistance. I think we need to let the day play out, see where this, you know, mm -hmm. candle takes us. Uh, certainly not, you know, broadly, I'm certainly I'm not looking to get into new breakouts on a Friday afternoon, uh, you know, or new trades at, at all, really. Uh, but if we do are able to close that, we now have that high point, right, in the form of today's high as at least some confirmation for some traders who do want to trade that breakout. Yeah, I, I, I love the technicals here, Frankie. Which was nice a nice little candle, right? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that would change the analysis just a tad. But um, you got a nice long range cup and handle, pretty picturesque cup and handle too. Nice cup, handle, consolidate, breakout. Um, and if this was over here in front of that, it'd be like position trade. I'm just not a massive swing trade Burke. Understandable. I do love this from a position though. And positions can hold through earnings. So I, I like it more on the longer time frame, Frankie. Not not necessarily on the shorter time frame here. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think with with Berkshire, uh, I think you can arguably arguably play it both ways. But I, th yeah. I don't have. Any, I mean, I certainly 100% get the, you know, position style. All right, I lied, Matt. One more, and it's a kiss goodbye <laughs> on on VFC. <laughs> uh, got got to look at a bear, right? Every now and then we see some selling. Uh, VFC broke down a little bit of a triple. Uh, triple test that supported around, uh, you know, at around 80. What uh, 80. 182 broke down heavily on earnings have retraced back testing that old support as new resistance i uh, always have to keep a bear on my watch list even though i don't really use them anymore <laughs> so i was gonna say you're uh the bear's coming out to play huh um I, I i think there's a couple like this that are technically sound it's just a matter of if you want to participate on the bear side and sure. I, I i although bears aren't dead Bears don't want to talk about being bears in America in 2021 right now. It's tough no. to be a bear. It's tough to, tough to be a bear. Right. So, it's yeah. tough to, to be a bear. But this People should be an interesting battle. It just is. Um, but I like the technicals. You got a reversal pattern followed by, you know, violation of support followed by a kiss of death. First snap back retracement following a violation. Yeah. 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 What's yeah. not to like other than just do you dare bear? That's right. Do it's you a tough dare environment for bear. bears for quite some time? Uh, if not you're just going to bear, though. This this space is the place to bear. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. And I got uh, Peloton. Okay, so Peloton. They had uh, earnings. What yesterday? They had earnings. The earnings was bad. I'm not going to go through the numbers, but I like the reversal characteristics and a violation of 140. I'm just going to rapid fire. Give me yay or nays. Yay. So you're looking to sell below support? Yeah. Zoom in. Yeah, it, yeah it, it, like 
underneath the 50, underneath the uh, the, the 140 level. And not, not, I'm not extending conversation, so it's a yay or yeah. nay. Yep. Um, I, I okay. see it. Yeah. Nay, yep. but I certainly see the sell. Yeah. It's All definitely right. a sell. I got, uh, FB a couple of random ones. I got, I got a lot to talk about today on my list there, Frankie, uh, long-term, long-term, mm-hmm. just keep it on the radar. FBHS, a little long-term breakout again. I'm a yes. I've had them on my I'm radar. Yes. I had to get through, yeah. had to get through earnings. Had to get they, through tried, earnings. they tried to break right before earnings, but yes, mm-hmm. uh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, deeper retracements, Frankie, I got two for you very quickly. You got one in big and one in B G S. Uh, I prefer the, the N N O X to both of them personally, but I think I prefer big to that. Those two. Um, I think I like big out of those two as well. I would agree. Yeah. I like yeah. big too. Yeah. Um, let's see. I had one I wanted to show you, Frankie. Deep retracement. Oh, Marky, this you might like this one, Mark. I got a trash company for Mark if he wants it. <laughs> Mark, Listen, hold on, Mark. Look, look. I'm just trying to get you back on the gravy train of blue chip. Look at that nine EMA on John Deere, bro. I know, and I love the bracket. How do you not like that? Listen, look at if you that like technical high, analysis. Ooh, you're gonna you like, like this. You gotta like that John Deere one, right? So I like the John Deere Listen, weekly when you chart have there. trends, a good rule is you play multi-week consolidation breakouts and pull back to the nine weekly until those fail. Every once in a while they do. That simple strategy will treat you really well in the next mm-hmm. few years. And VCR here, a little breakout of 180 from earnings. Hey, we got lots to go. We're going to have a lot of stocks hey. talked about later on today. That's yeah. always fun. If you want <clears> an <throat> early uh, cat trash that makes cash no yeah yeah let's give him let's give him nobody here. besides frank <laughs> prvg trivago guy <laughs> look at go look at it don't be don't be like that okay trvg go look at the go look at it why would you want to look at that when you're looking at apple Mark, Listen, give me another one. Your trash. I'll, I'll, give me a different trash. Pick. <laughs> TRVG, go look at okay, it. I'm TRVG. Serious. I gave you Microsoft, bro. That's nice. You, you, you listen. <laughs> we tried, T- Mark. <laughs> okay, give it go. to me again, Mark. Give it T-R-V-G. to me again. TRVG. That Tesla breakout of 900 goes to a thousand. I, love I that would one. would absolutely agree with with that. A little I'm far so, away. I, but... I can do this all day long, bro. Give me another one. And every time you do, I'm going to go out a hundred shares. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll make it. We'll make it your number one position real fast. <laughs> oh God! Well, Trivago will have to wait till Monday. Monday, Marky. Uh, Monday, Monday. Um, and it's not a bad technical setup either, guys. That was awesome, by the way. I love going through charts. Listen, with, with I love like adding that. things to my watch list, whether it's Frank breakout or Emily bringing a pick or Matt bringing a pick, or the Trade Masters. I love adding things to my watch list. It's I love it. It's it, it's I have so many things I love about this community, and that is certainly one of them. Well, I love what Spencer Hansen said in the chat here. This is absolutely my favorite time of the week in the halftime uh, crew uh, between Frank's charts and the team's ideas from the scouting reports. It almost gives me a full watch list for the weekend. Absolutely, that's the whole point. Uh, bird dogging for you guys. We're going to continue those conversations as a team of coaches here in just a few minutes uh, as we wrap up our week. Uh, you know, let's let's start wrapping our show up here today. By the way, uh, Frankie, you know, it's Friday, Frank Day. I'm going to give you the first word. What are your final thoughts? Okay. Well, we're uh, we're coming out of earnings season, right? Uh, we're not. There's still going to be some stragglers. There's still seventy or so S and P companies next week, but we're on the uh, back end of that. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about that uh, broadly for a little while. Uh, markets are strong, right? You, you trade the trends, listen to the chart. Uh, the charts are always smarter than me. Uh, that's one one thing I learned a long time ago. <laughs> so, you know, uh, be open. I do believe, you know, uh, like Maddie was talking early on. Uh, that probably expectations are not another 5% week in the market next week, which does open up the door for more, uh, you know, stock pickers uh, out there. Uh, and we'll have plenty of options in a lot of different spaces. So uh, follow your systems. Do I, I trust the team. I know they do uh, do this the right way. Uh, great to be here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Tim, what, uh, do, what do you think of Callaway Golf for the scouting report meeting team? Uh, veto. <laughs> okay. Earnings, right. earnings. Right. By the way, bring up TRVG right. if you can. <laughs> oh, you want you want which which one? Do no, you just want do TRVG. 
You want T R V G? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you I'm gonna I'm gonna give you that one. Ernest. I robot. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to give you a robot. What did you say again, Tim? TRVG. Oh, you said TRVG? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beyond Meat setting up in a deeper retracement, I think we should take an eye uh, on You got anything else, T? Uh, TRVG. Oh, man. Did you guys see <laughs> Abbott Labs bullish retracement off the nine? I, Tim, I can do this. Oh, my gosh. I, seriously, my Hold whole on. count is going to be the Tremont. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to start booking Wait, hotel geez. rooms just to support did, the cause. Did you see the potential breakout in Fleur? Fleur. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, man, nah. we could do this all day long. <laughs> Marky, <laughs> final thought of the week. Just listen, it's, it was, listen I, the, I love these markets so much. I love trading. And, you know, and I was talking to Tim the other day. It's like, ah, I'm going to miss this particular crazy market, what has gone. But you always adjust, right? Whatever the market brings at you, it's personality, whether it's volatility blowing up or people rebounding. There's always a different market around the corner. And as traders, we adjust. We talk about it as a community. We look at things. Uh, you know, it, it, no matter what the market is, you'll be able to find success because collectively as a whole, we will um, come together, talk, discuss, analyze, you know, make our best guess, make our predictions, look at the things. Community is strong community is strong so whether it's this market or the market in 2024 or the market in 2035 we will find success because technical analysis works in any year so um that is all i have to say i'm now going to book my hotel room somewhere <laughs> there you go i just want to say thanks to bro truth he said uh you know uh, super chat to say your videos on youtube have helped him immensely thanks uh, thank you i'm glad that they do i don't know how super chat works i don't either i, I just know I you're just, supposed I, to read them i think uh, we just got a two dollar tip and i feel I good about it i did too i i, I, I just gave, have to ask uh, bro truth hold on bro truth i gave a two dollar tip to the uh to the dude who did my gas the other day no it was a three dollar tip but it was still the same concept I feel so good about what just happened there, Bro Truth. I love you, bro. That's Absolutely. awesome. I just got to ask, Bro Truth, uh, is, it, is it related to our truth the wrestler? It, he's a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic man. If you don't know our truth you are missing out on a wonderful, wonderful, hey, entertaining individual. If you want to see a surprised, happy person, tip the drive through person at a fast food place. Are you kidding me? Bro Truth just tip tackled $2. I'm the happiest guy in the world like, right now. Like, like yes. yes. Listen, the tip. world is right. Tip. I'm going to go tip. tip right now. I'm going somewhere just solely so I can tip somebody. Like, uh, seriously, tipping is a good feeling. You're, I love it. It tip, is. Tip, it is, tip, absolutely. Tip. Now I've got to go Don't ask lunch. me to tip on top of an 18% gratuity at a hotel. I'll lose my mind. Now I have to go watch the scene from Reservoir Dogs on tipping. It's one of my you favorite. You have to. Oh, that is a good scene. Oh, yeah. oh that is a good scene. <laughs> is fantastic. I, I catch, catch waiting as well. Uh, okay. You know, if you haven't uh, seen it in a while, yep. that, that'll, that'll remind you. <laughs> Waiting's great. You never, you, never, you never mess with servers. Ever. Oh. No, you don't. <laughs> All right, Matty. <laughs> yeah. take, take us out, my friend. Uh, final thoughts? I don't know if I had final thoughts today. I just have thoughts in general that I'm not willing to share at this point. <laughs> They're probably best hidden. <laughs> yeah. I, had, I, had a, I, had, I had too many thoughts on today's show. We're good, bro. All right. I'll just say this, guys. Got really, reports. Really fun week of uh, yeah. you know shows here at Tackle Trading. We hope everybody out there took advantage of the market conditions. Obviously, we'll get you guys updated and uh, you know all the information you need to get ready for next week's trading as well. Coach Mark has his at the uh, closing bell for the week show here in 44 minutes, uh, 3 o'clock Eastern time. He does that each and every week. You can find access to that on TackleTrading.com. We've got a Sunday night prep show, which if you're a pro member at Tackle Trading, this is becoming Super a very, Bowl picks. very, very popular popular thing we'll do super all right we gotta talk about the sunday prep class okay the super bowl yeah super bowl that's a we're tackle trading guys the ie tackle is because we are all class is gonna be right sunday is a holiday it is a national holiday holiday. for tackle (laughs) trading we are not putting out live content on sunday yeah like plus i'm gonna be that's like asking us to do (laughs) it He will. I, I was trying to do it the nice way, Mark. But Here, th- this is what I will do. I will do a after Sunday night, I will record a prep video with the thoughts and this and that. And I'll put it up where we normally put the uh, prep class. So no live class this Sunday, but uh, I will put up a little 20 minute video talking about the events coming up for the coming week. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like it, like it, like it. Okay, it's time. Got to put your got to put your name out there, guys. I, I want to make a pick. I, I saw read. a stat today that fifty four percent of Americans are going to bet on the Super Bowl in some form or another. Can we get that number to match the market participant rate? <laughs> yeah. So I want to take a bet. I want to take a bet. Now, the line's three points. Is that right? Uh, three, three and a half. Three and a half. Where you go. It's three and a half. You'll probably end up at three. But it's three and a half right now. I'm willing to lay three on the Chiefs. Uh, I'll take it. What are we going to bet? Yeah, you have to. You guys have to bet because I'm a Bronco fan. I have to root against the Chiefs, so I'm going. Uh, I'm going Tom Brady and, and the Bucks, but I don't want to bet. <laughs> so. I'm gonna lay on old Patrick. We'll we'll figure out the parameters of the bet, but uh, Mark, why are you going Chiefs here? Because you seem confident here, bro. Oh, I dude, are you kidding? I had such a great week in the in the market. I just okay, want to gamble some more. Like, you know, like, you know, like I have no logic. Money then. Okay, I'm okay with that too. All right, well, I'm gonna lay out some logic. I mean, quick, it's the, I mean, I, it's not like my confidence in Trivago. You know, this is just a gamble. <laughs> So far, it looks like Casey has a slight uh, lead and, in the chat. Yes, and I am betting on Tom Brady here, which is like betting on Microsoft. So that does, that does fit. Um, but you do have Patrick Mahomes, which is not Trafalgo or whatever that company was. <laughs> so so here's, here's my take. Obviously, obviously it goes without saying, I think the two best players on, in, in, on the field this week will be from the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Um, those two can light it up and they are in sync right now. So I love that matchup. I think Travis Kelsey scores a touchdown there too. Tyreek Hill, man, we could see a Tyreek Hill game as well, but I will say eight of the next 10 players are Tampa Bay in terms of quality. So I do think you, you, you have a little bit better of a team dynamic in Tampa Bay right now, especially during the playoffs, but you are top heavy at the chiefs and that top heavy is something of beauty i mean patrick mahomes tyreek hill hartman um <clears throat> travis kelsey i mean this is just a beautiful beautiful thing and who doesn't cheer on andy reed like you're a terrible human being if you don't cheer on andy reed he's an amazing amazing man uh so it's going to be a great game it's going to be a great game but i'm sorry i just can't go against tom brady who is going to tell Bill Belichick this week that it was not about him in the last 20 years. It was all about me. There's no, there's, it's like Kobe <laughs> Bryant said one time, there's no IN team, but there certainly is an F and me, M E. Okay. Me. It's all about Tom Brady this week. Tom Brady's going to light it up in the second half. The, the, the Super Bowl is a marathon. It's a marathon. It's a four hour juggernaut. Tom Brady knows how to play that game. They're going to be down in the first half. They're going to make a comeback. Win it by a field goal. I got Tampa Bay. I got Tampa Bay, I should have said. I get the plus three. I'll take it. I would have argued for the three and a half, but I do think they went out right in a very, very, very good game. Hey, Tim, you take three points. You want to bet on Tampa Bay? No, he the- doesn't. What do you mean? Do I take three points? No, you don't take anything. Stop the conversation. <laughs> like, no, I, I got to bet. You're not Tim, having but... Tim jump on my side. It's not happening. <laughs> I'll bet you all. I'll bet you, you all. Not, no, you're not. I see what you're doing here and it's not happening. I've had Tampa. I got Tampa. I was, it's the only uh, pick I actually did right in the uh, podcast. You prediction. did. Yeah. Tampa. I, 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 had... I changed to Kansas city. I know Tim's track record. I'm with Mark. <laughs> oh, Casey, yeah. I'll lay the three. I, I, just hate with, I, with I hate so much about what just transpired. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm, I'm, listen, I think it's going to be a good, great game. Frank, you got what? Give us, give us your pick, Frankie. I know uh, you're, you're saying you're cheering on the, the chiefs. Listen, I'm not really cheering. Ella. Ella in the chat, uh, Ellis Tree Trading said, you know, Bronco fan can't cheer for the Chiefs, won't cheer for Tom Brady. Uh, understandable. Uh, I, 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 my head says that the Chiefs can, can take this one. Uh, that, that's who I will go with. Plus, Tim picked the Buccaneers. When in doubt, pick against Tim when it comes to sports betting. Sports Sorry, betting. Tim. You always bet against Tim. He, 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 Tim can't separate his politics from his trading when it comes to sports gambling. <laughs> well, listen, 
if He's you can, brand guy, if you want to jump on with the Chiefs, you go right ahead. Go right ahead. Don't care. Can I, I just got pretend Tampa they're the Broncos? <laughs> you can. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm excited for the game. It's going to be a fun game, one way or the yeah, other. Yeah, it is going to be a fun game. So and yeah, fun game. I, I always like Super Bowls where I don't really care who wins or loses, so I can just enjoy the game. And this will be one of those for me. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what? Honestly, as long as it's a good game, I'm going to be happy because I don't really have a horse in that race. I, I like both squads. They're both playing good. I like good football. they got great storylines. I mean, Tom Brady, the GOAT beyond the GOAT at this point. Um, and Patrick Mahomes is just the young up-and-coming gunslinger ready to establish his legacy at the age of 25 going against the the, the, the – like Tom Brady – is he 43 now? Like 43 so, yes. years old. I mean, 43. Just, and he was talking this week, like, yeah, I got this workout regimen, like re- regimen that we're going to be putting out next year. And we're going to even have it better next year. I'm like, dude, you're older than me. <laughs> TB12, TB12. And TB12. I We all need to get on the TB12 diet because wow, Tom Brady, it just never ages. So mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to the game. I think it's going to be a fascinating game. I can't wait. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, me as well. It's gonna be super fun. Make sure. See, I, oh wait, food. I got Linda on my side. That offsets Tim. Tim's bad karma. That does. Hey, that hey does. Linda, it I'll does. bet you We're too. No. Send in your bet. I'll bet it. You email team at tackle she training for your friendly wagers. Last time. Listen, I'm <laughs> listen. I'm feeling confident about my Chiefs pick. I'll listen, I want to just. Anyone. I'm gonna lay off my bet and not pick anything. There's way too much officially nobody. Here. Have, Officially can gamble with Mark at Tackle Trading, Mark. That's, like, <laughs> that's the official Tackle just, Trading stance. I just want to make that – that's the official Tackle Trading stance. <laughs> Tim, you and I are going to discuss a bet later this afternoon. Sure, Saturday. yeah. And yeah, we'll watch the game together. It'll be good to, to be on uh, the two sides that have some fun with it. Uh, all right, guys, let's wrap this one for the week. Great job uh, by all of you here today. Appreciate uh, the analysis, the insight, the laughs, the fun as well while we're doing it. Uh, guys out there, Team Tackle, if you want to continue the conversation, I actually just posted the question, who's your Super Bowl pick in the Facebook group? I'll drop the link one more time. Come and join us in that Facebook group uh, for continued conversations outside these shows. Other than that, guys, we're done for the weekend. We'll see you guys on Monday.